I'll be looking at a message this morning that I've titled Vacancy for Thanksgivers. Or you can simply put it, Vacancy for Praisers. Or rather, God is looking for praisers. In the month of September, all through that month, we did our praise service. All the Sundays was dedicated to praise. And during the course of the service, while the man of God was ministering, there was a particular test he was actually dwelling on in John chapter 4, verse 23, when he said, The Father seeketh, for verse 23, say, But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. As he was saying this, the revelation I got was that there is a vacancy for people to come and worship God. There is a vacancy for people to come and thank God. Vacancy is an opening. God is looking for people to thank him. God is looking for people to come and worship him. You see, the word thanksgiving is a giving. I've often said that. It is a giving. It is a giving. And the Bible talked about God. He was the one that even started it. He said, the Bible said that he gave his only begotten son. Thanksgiving is giving of thanks. Is giving of thanks. It might not be convenient for you. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. He said, in everything we should do what? Give thanks. We should do what? Give thanks. In everything. Since I was born, up till now, I've never seen a year that is as turbulent as this year called 2020. This year called 2020. A lot of persons encountered losses. A lot of persons are frustrated. A lot of persons are faced with one challenge or the other that they, they don't just know what to do this year 2020. At some point, we were at home for like four months. And when we got back, it was as if another one started again. So much crisis here and there. But the truth is this. No matter how frustrated you, can, you have ever been in this year 2020, there is still a way out. There is always a way out. It is only when there is no way out that you will be confused. When you study the life of Jesus Christ, in John chapter 6, if you look at verse 3, when he had a challenge of trying to feed multitudes, he said, and Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Verse 4, can we look at verse 4? And the Passover a feast of the Jews, 5 and 6. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that this may eat? And this is the emphasis I want to put on. He said, and this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he will do. He knew what he will do. What am I trying to say in essence is this. No matter how frustrated you have been this year, there is a way out of that frustration. There is a way out of that frustration. The only way you would have been bothered if, if there is no way out. I've come to tell you that if you don't know what to do, 
concerning any matter or concerning any situation, thanksgiving is the only thing you need to do. If you look at this same verse, verse 11, the Jesus that said he knows what to do. Look at him confirming what the master plan of how we intend to, to solve the challenge. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks. And so when he said that he knows what to do, what he wants to do, he knows how to navigate his way. And that way is by giving thanks. He said he knows what to do. And what, does he, what is it that he wanted to do to solve that challenge that is before him? Is for him to give thanks. It's for him to give thanks. No matter the situation, no matter the challenge, no matter what you are going through, thanksgiving is a code in the spirit that tells God that you are looking for something. Is a code. Is a code in the spirit. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. Jeremiah 30, verse 19. Talking about thanksgiving. He said, And out of them shall proceed what? Thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. Hallelujah. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. They have a challenge here. The challenge here was that they are few and they are small. But the way out, he said, out of your mouth shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that marry. You will always have reason not to give thanks. But the truth is this, no matter what it is, you still need to give thanks. No matter what it seems, no matter the challenge you are going through, thanksgiving is what you need to do when you don't know what to do. Thanksgiving, if you want to navigate your way out of any challenge, you are being faced with rent. You cannot pay your rent. You have been faced with one well, maybe you want to travel and you don't have the finances to travel. You are in a marriage and you are believing God for the children to come and they are not coming. You are a young lady and you are believing God for a husband and it seems not to be coming. Like what the hymn said, just wait. The way out is not for you to murmur. It's not for you to complain. The way out is for you to do what? Thanks, thank God. Thank God. No matter how terrible that condition may be, I've come to tell you that even in that condition, God has a way of converting that condition and installing an air condition inside that problem. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it seems now. All you need to do is to consciously give thanks to God. It is something that you owe God. God is always looking for people to give him thanks. If he has declared that position vacant, it's for you to come in and apply. And when you apply, there is a renomination that is attached to it. If only you are sensitive in the spirit. All you need to do is to apply. My brother, the reverend said something earlier on about the ten lepers that we are cleansed. The Bible said in, in Luke chapter 17, if you look at verse 15, he said, out of the nine, out of the nine, only one came back. That goes to show the scarcity we have when it comes to thanksgiving. There is scarcity. You might want to judge that man, that the rest of them, the rest nine that didn't come. How come they didn't come? How come is the only one that came? 
But when you look at your life in total, how often do you even give thanks? How often do you even give thanks? It is not only when things are moving on fine that you give thanks. The other day I did my birthday and I came up celebrating. Must it always be that it was when that day I've gotten that I will celebrate? Can't you come be proud before that time and give thanks ahead of that day? You thank him and ahead. Because if your motive for wanting to give thanks is for what God has done for you, and on your way, you are going to make that thanks to God, and something happened, it simply means you will not come and give thanks. You have the motive to come and thank God because he has given you a car, and you are driving the car down to church on a Sunday to come and give this share testimony and thank God for providing a car to you, for you. And when you are coming, you had an accident. And you are still strong. Rather than coming back, you just look at, come, there is no point for giving thanks. There is no point. Because the essence why I want to give thanks has been nullified. But that ought not to be. That ought not to be. Whatever the situation, the fact that there is a situation is, a, is, is for you to Put in thanks, apply thanks to it. When God is saying give thanks, he has a reason that is why he's saying you should give thanks. By default, the way you and I are configured, the way you and I are made, we are made to always give thanks. We are made to always praise God. He said in Isaiah, I think verse 43, verse, verse 20 or so, he said, those people have I formed for myself that they may show forth my praise. If you are living a life without thanksgiving, there is no way you will live a life that is successful. Because by default, you are, you, are, you are meant to give thanks. When the manufacturer of a car, for instance, was, was putting forth that car, when he was fixing all those parts, the essence why he was putting those things together was that it was for convenience, was for a car. He, he looked forward for a car that would be able to move people from one point to another. The day that car fails to move people from one point to another is only a boss. He's not serving the purpose. And the reason why you put forth your money when you want to, to, to get a car is because of the purpose it will serve you. If it is not serving purpose, there is no point. The reason manufacturers are smiling to the bank today is because it is serving a purpose. And so if that is it, it's also like that with thanksgiving. When you give thanks, when you give praises, you are fulfilling the purpose why you are created. When you take out thanks, when you take out purpose, um, um, what is it called? Praise. Out of your life. It means you are not fulfilling purpose. That is what it seems. By default, the factory mode is for you to always give thanks. You owe God thanks. There is no way, there is no, there is no way the issue might have been that you just look up. Because the truth of the matter is this. Complaining and shedding of tears is not the way out to it. Shed tears, the naughty, whatever. Let your tears even fill a bucket. It's still not the way out. The key, or rather the way out, is thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is that key that will bring you out of that crisis. It is my prayer this morning that as you learn to thank God, that as you learn to praise God, I see God restoring unto you whatever you have lost in the name of Jesus. You look at your life and you just say, come, there's no point. For people that gave as far as the kingdom is concerned, that gave, 
they gave out of nothing. They gave out of nothing. I spoke earlier of, about God. The, the, the Jesus Christ he gave to us, he gave it to us, was the only child that he has. It was not as if he had other children. No, that was the only. And the Bible went for that to say the begotten son. But he gave it out to save humanity. It was not convenient. What am I trying to say in essence? You might look at the, the things I'm seeing is not convenient. But that is the very reason why you do what? Need to give thanks. Abraham gave thanks. They gave, gave an offering of Isaac. It was not as if there were several sons. That was the only son Isaac he had. But he offered it to God. It was something he offered to the point that God saw his faithfulness and he asked, he asked him to, 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 to put it to an end. At every point in time, you and I, oh God, thanks. You and I, oh God, praise. It is what you owe God. The truth is this, how God will do it it is not your business. But he has said he will do it. He can do that within fractions of seconds. Jacob and Joseph moving to the palace. Do you know that God actually created that vacancy overnight? It was overnight that the opening came. It was not as if there, there were initial plan. Overnight, how he put something to trouble a man and that vacancy opened up. It opened up. At every point in time, apply thanksgiving, apply praise to whatever challenge you are going through. You saw what happened at the end of the day. Something that was not enough in the John chapter 6 that we read was not enough. But the master plan that what was not enough now became something that was much that multiplied, that they took several baskets out of it was only possible via thanksgiving. It was possible via thanksgiving. What in the beginning was not enough because the Bible said he knows what to do. And the thing that he needs to, he, he wanted to do was to apply thanks to solve that challenge. Many often a time we take some of the things that God is actually doing in our lives for granted. We, 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 we complain a lot. We try to tell God that he has not even done much for him to deserve thanksgiving. Sometimes we have headache and we just say, is it not this little headache? They tell you how many people are dying. Some persons are dying of that you call little. We try to, we, we, we tend to trivialize things. I was reading a story about a man who the Bible said was above 40 years in Acts chapter 3. A man that was lame. The Bible said the very day that Peter and Paul actually ministered healing to that man that very day, that very day. He said the man went into the temple and he was rejoicing and he was giving thanks. Why was he giving thanks? He can now walk. The walk that you and I are seeing as in what is even this big deal? The man got just an opportunity one time opportunity he got. And, you know, all through the period the man would have sat down in that gate. He would have been looking at people. If only I can have these legs that you people are having. And you are moving in, you are moving out. You are, he would just be looking at people. But that very day, one opportunity to move his legs, even when the Bible said the man was sleeping, the Bible said he was giving thanks. Even while leaping, I'm okay with it. It is okay for me to give thanks. 
if, if it is only this sleeping, I can I will still give God thanks. It was by him giving God thanks that the Bible said he began to walk. We complain a lot. He has not done enough. We complain a lot because we have not gotten to where we want to get to. The only way whereby you can get to where you want to get to in life is through thanks. The day you discover that your life is devoid of thanksgiving, you need, to, you need to take your life back to factory setting. You know what that means? Take your life back to factory setting and reconfigure your life and add thanksgiving and you start over again. Every time they call us, maybe there is an issue, we need to sort out a network issue, and we get back, we discover some of the, 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 the radio is malfunctioning. One of the things we do when that malfunctioning, when we are not getting results, is to take the radio back to factory setting and, and reconfigure it, default it, and take it back to factory setting. Maybe that is what most of us need to do. Because a life that is devoid of thanksgiving cannot be successful. All through the week, I was just looking at that. I've, 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 I've encountered so much this week, I was just looking at it. But, you know, the only assurance is this. The only assurance is this, that I always have. Anytime I'm being faced with challenges, is I remember there's a word that will always guide me. It doesn't matter how slow things are going at the moment. But the truth of the matter is this. That you are waiting is not the absence of progress. That you are waiting or believing God for something to come is not as if you are not making progress. All you need to do is that at the appointed time you will do what you need to do. We have a lot of persons have lost so much this year. But I've come to say to you that the only way out, the only way out is for us to live a life of thanksgiving. It's for us to live a life of thanksgiving. And so therefore this morning, thanksgiving as a message is better practicalized rather than speaking it. Like I'm saying now, just say give thanks. I'm saying praise. It is not in the speaking. It is in the practicing. So therefore, this morning, are there people that want to be praise practitioners in the house? You want to be thanksgiving practitioner? Remember I said there is a vacancy. And until you become a, key, a, a praise practitioner, apply to that vacancy, you are not qualified for what? The renomination. So therefore, this morning, I expect the choir to come on stage this morning. As we are going to practicalize it, we are going to praise God. We are not concerned. It's not a big deal about what we have lost in this year 2020. But the good thing is this. We have an assurance that we have a God that can restore. That is the encouragement. He has not left us stranded. When you praise God, when you praise God, you bring God down. And when you bring him down, there is no way you can be stranded. It's like God is coming down and you are complaining that you are stranded. It is not possible. And so this morning, I expect the choir to lead us in song that will make people to praise God in a dance. And those who need to drum should drum. Those who need to play the piano should do that. All the instruments should be activated for us to give thanks to God, for us to give praise to God. It is my prayer this morning that as we apply to this vacancy of thanksgiving and praise, I see God restoring all that we have lost in the name of Jesus. So those that are ready to give thanks, why not rise up? Baba, I praise your name. You are worthy of praise. Baba, I praise. 